Lecture five, causative agents of security found in hospital acquired infection, anaerobic infection. Okay, what is anaerobes or obligate anaerobes or street anaerobes? It's a um, microorganism uh, which uh, can propagate even a small amount of oxygen because oxygen is toxic for that crops of microbes. And uh, toxic product of oxygen metabolism is, uh, um, can destroy the uh, cell wall of anaerobes. That's why they don't use oxygen in uh, uh, their metabolism to get energy. They, uh, they have uh, another way to get energy and uh, some of their enzymes are inactivated by oxygen. Uh, anaerobic bacteria uh, are clostridium. They are sporoforming, sporoforming and non-sporoforming non gram-negative anaerobic bacteria. It's a bacteroides, Prevotella, Parthenomonas, uh, Fusa bacteria, and other. Uh, non-sporoforming gram-negative bacteria, as they can live in human, uh, organism uh, as a part of normal microbiota, for example, bacteroides. It's a uh, um, it's a normal uh, part of microbiota of gastrointestinal tract. But in some cases, they can cause wound infection, uh, wound anaerobic infection. For example, bacteroides they can cause abscesses. Um, but today we will talk about uh, Clostridium and on this slide you can see uh, species, or the, uh, species of uh, Clostridium genus and uh, um, Clostridium difficile, it's a uh, bacteria who can cause antibiotic as associated diarrhea and pseudomembranous colitis and it is very common infection and uh, also very common infection clostridium perfringens. It can cause soft tissue infection, cellulitis, support, supportive myositis, uh, gas gangrene, food poisoning, enteritis, uh, septicemia, and other. More rare and uncommon as infection which caused by Clostridium septicum and uh, uh, Clostridium form bacteria, histoliticum, inocum, novi, ram ramosum, and others. And also, Clostridium botulinum and Clostridium tendinae are uncommon, and uh, uh, we have uh, a few cases in Russia of botulism every year. Okay, uh, first topic is about the uh, causative agents of gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is a several polymicrobial bound infection. It is caused by various clostridial anaerobic microflora in association with pathogenic facultative anaerobic bacteria like Staphylococci, Streptococci, gram-negative probe, etc. So gas gangrene, it's a wound, classical wound infection with a lot of uh, pus and uh, necrosis. Necrosis is a main feature of gas gangrene and um, uh, bacteria who cause gas gangrene in their metabolism produce a lot of gas and this gas is kept in the uh, necrotic tissue. And also this process is associated with aerobic bacteria like Staphylococci and others. They help uh, anaerobic bacteria to, uh, to by, 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 um, by reducing oxygen. Staphylococci and others, they reduce oxygen and the anaerobic bacteria, clostridium, they can live, they can start to multiply. 
Okay, so start of discovery, classification. Um, causative agent of gas gangrene belong to family Clostridiaceae, genus Clostridium, and there are a few species. Uh, most common is Clostridium perfringens. More rare is Clostridium novus, septicum, histolyticum. Uh, and other um, Clostridium sordelli, phallax, rams, ramosum, and some other. Morphology. Clostridium perfringens, gram-positive, non-motile rolls with random ends. Oval spore of central or subterminal localization, capsule within the infected host. Clostridium novi are road-shaped, uh, motile, peritricious bacteria with subterminal spores, and it does not form capsule. <coughs> Clostridium septicum are polymorphic, non-capsulated rolls that can develop uh, develop long uh, filamental um, uh, um, fil uh, filamental forms. Microorganisms carry central or subterminal spore and peritricus flagella. And Clostridium histolyticum in morphology is similar with previous two representatives. More common is Clostridium perfringens. Cultivation, Clostridium perfringens is the most iron tolerant among all other Clostridia. Uh, it is cultured in iron sulfide agar, shedler agar, and glucose blood agar in anaerobic jars. Kit turtles and other anaerobic matter also can be applied. Uh, Clostridium perfringens is able to break in iron sulfide, sulfide agar. Uh, with first uh, six, eight hours of cultivation. In Kitaros, the medium Clostridium perfringens renders homogeneous turbidity with case production. And as a Clostridium novicept from history, to more strictly anaerobic bacteria on glucose blood agar, uh, Clostridium novi form rose fringer colonies with hemolysis. Clostridium septicum is cultured readily in meat pepton broths. The bacteria develop a film of glucose blood agar. In agar stab cultures, the colonies looks like balls of food. Okay, here you can see uh, how Clostridium fingers grows on the uh, blood agar, and blood agar is uh, most comfortable for Clostridium. The fringens, um, nutrient media and blood media, it causes the hemolysis. It grows with big uh, gray smoothie colonies, which are surrounded with a zone of hemolysis. And this is sheep blood agar. Uh, and uh, uh, also, uh, there are uh, also, there is hemolytic activity of uh, uh, of Clostridium penfringens. Biochemical properties: um, all Clostridia are obligate anaerobes, but as we said previously, Clostridium penfringens uh, is not so strict. It can live in not so strict anaerobic uh, condition. Uh, and uh, Clostridia <coughs> causative agent of uh, gas gangrene uh, have high um, biochemical activity. They high, they can ferment a lot of uh, sugar like glucose, sucrose, lactose, and many other with large amount of acid and gas production. That's why uh, it. Uh, the name of disease is gas gangrene because of a lot of gas in the tissue. Uh, this gas is because of uh, high ferment fermental activity, destroying fermentation of, uh, of sugar with formation of gas and acid. Also, they require, require gelatin, coagulate blood serum, and milk resulting in sponge like clot. These bacteria reduce nitrates to nutrients. They produce uh, uh, butyric uh, and acetic acids, uh, acids 
and large amount of gases. Uh, clostridium novi ferments glucose, maltose, and glycerol with acid and gas production. They also liquefy gelatin and coagulate milk. Uh, clostridium septicum slowly liquefies gelatin and utilizes proteins with appearance of hydrogenic sulfide and ammonia. Um, clostridium histolyticum does not ferment sugar but reveals a substantial catalytic activity. So the um, the most higher fermenting activity is uh, is presence uh, is present in clostridium perfidis. As the species are not so uh, active, but they also produce uh, some gases and acids in their metabolic process. Antigenic structure, serological differentiation of clostridium perfringens is based on, based on the antigenic variation of microbial toxins. <coughs> Six main serovars, A, B, C, D, E, and F are known. Type A is further divided into many subtypes. Types A and C and D are pathogenic for humans. B, C, D, and E affects animals. Types are caused gas gangrene, CD, the cause uh, food poisoning. Violence factor. But, uh, pathogen, path, path, pathogenic process is uh, connected with uh, exotoxin production by clostridium. Clostridium are very toxic bacteria. They produce very strong uh, toxins. They are the main is alpha toxin of clostridium perfringens, and it is phospholipase. Uh, phospholipase high lead activity that damage cell membrane and uh, enhance vascular permeability and develops necrotizing activity. Okay, please remember histology. Uh, the uh, Cell membrane is consists of B layer of phospholipids, and alpha toxin can destroy these phospholipids. And by destroying phospholipids, it destroys cell membrane, so kills the cell. And necrotize, and this is necrotizing activity. B toxin is a potent necrotizing substance, and it also uh, causes cell damaging. Uh, E-toxin increases vascular permeability in gastrointestinal tract. Uh, Yotoxin or perfringolysin uh, or polyfunction hemolytic uh, dermonecrotizing and lethal properties. K-toxin collagenase, mutoxin hyaluronidase, and uh, mextoxin develops hemolytic activity. Uh, also, clostridium perfringens can produce enterotoxin. The enterotoxin binds to receptors of the brush border membrane of the small intestine epithelium in the ileum and jejunum, but not duodenum. Insertion of the toxin into the cell membrane leads to the alterated membrane permeability and loss of fluid and ions. The enterotoxin also acts as a super antigen, stimulating T lymphocyte activity and production, deeper production of cytokines. Okay, uh, so now you know that uh, clostridium, uh, that clostridium are very toxic. They produce a lot of uh, toxin which cause cell damage in the, uh, and damaging of the tissue, necrosis. It is because of killing the cell, because of destroying uh, hyaluronic acid, because of destroying uh, collagen and other. And also, uh, on the other side, clostridium can produce uh, toxin which um, affects uh, intestine, uh, especially enterotoxin, uh, who can cause uh, who can cause uh, diarrhea because of uh, interaction with the cell of jejunum and ileum uh, by uh, 
causing the losing of fluids of and in ions and also uh, cause inflammation in the intestine uh, because uh, this enterotoxin is super antigen. What about resistance? You know that spore is a uh, uh, form with, of bacteria which make uh, bacteria resistant to environment, to make bacteria uh, for su surviving in a worse condition. And that's why uh, uh, resistance of the spore is very high, uh, in spite bacteria. bacteria. Bacteria is not uh, so resistant in Clostridium, bacteria, uh, bacteria clostridium is not so resistant uh, in the uh, in the environment, but spore they uh, can withstand boiling for time period of uh, eight to uh, ninety minutes. It is very long period. Uh, vegetative form are most susceptible for hydrogen peroxide and phenol and concentration is commonly employed for dissipation. So it is not a problem to kill vegeta vegetative form, but it's a big problem to kill the spores. Pathogenic and clinical findings in case cancer. Clostridia stay in the intestine of animals and humans as source of infection and discharge outside with fetuses. Spores of Clostridia are constantly, constantly present in the soil. Hence, any contact with dust and soil particles uh, invitable results in uh, contamination of skin and mucosal tissue with Clostridia spores. So, bacteria, they live in the gastrointestinal tract of animals, like cows, horses, and with a uh, petrol, they can be uh, transmitted to the soil and uh, start to spore forming. And in the form of spore, they can leave, uh, they can, can be kept in the soil uh, through a very long time, uh, about 100 years. And uh, in the case of uh, uh, Entering the spores from soil to the ground, uh, people can catch uh, can catch the gas ganglion. Gas ganglion develops when closely damaged soft tissue, muscle, adipose, or connective tissue become infected with the spores of Clostridium perfringens, another Clostridia. It occurs in several trauma with tissue crush after septic abortion in case of fire rounds or of other similar situation. Uh, <coughs> Clostridium infection is predominantly transmitted by contact road. The positive agent of anaerobic infection requires certain conditions for the germination in, and overgrowth. The basic one is the presence of dead or damaged tissue resulting in low oxidation reduction potential state of anaerobiosis. So they, they need uh, clostridium, they need anaerobic condition. And this anaerobic condition can, uh, uh, can be created by uh, aerobic bacteria, uh, which can be in association with uh, uh, clostridium and also uh, if uh, if um, death or uh, dam uh, death or damaging uh, is present in in the tissue because of um, trauma, and that's why gas gangrene is not so uh, common infection. This infection uh, can be uh, occurs in the situation of war of some uh, some um, uh, catastrophe and other types. <clears throat> Characteristic type of injury, deep, narrow ones or contaminated 
uh, crash tissue as well as patient state of health predisposed to the emergence of gas gag. For instance, diabetes may little strongly impairs tissue oxygenation. Progressive propagation of pathogenic anaerobes leads to the further degradation of body tissue, thus uh, a gravitative anaerobic condition. Active spread of infection ensure a uh, relatively short incubation period from several hours up to four or five days. Gas gangrene targets primary muscles and adipose tissue as they harbor a lot of potential substrates for microbial toxic enzyme. As a result, exotoxin or clostridia causes expanding tissue necrosis and melting. It is followed by accumulation of gaze like, zero, like um, car uh, hydrogen. Uh, like hydrogen and uh, uh, carboxyl dioxide in soft tissue that is detected as a gas gangrene. <laughs> Growing edema blocks local circulation thereby enhancing an aerobic condition and toxin production. Okay. Edema is characteristic for the first phase of, of the injection, infection and gangrene of the soft tissue progress in the second phase. Microbial exotoxin generate both local and systemic uh, devastating effects being spread through the body. The products of tissue uh, decay render additional toxicity against host tissue. As a result of massive edema and tissue necrosis with case formation, the skin over the affected limbs becomes pale and then reddish and cyanotic with extensive hemorrhages. Deep destructive changes in subcutaneous adipose tissue, muscles, and fascias require urgent surgical treatment and systemic antimicrobial and antitoxin therapy. Um, so, the main um, that you should know that uh, gas gangrene it's a wild infection and. Uh, there is a two step. First step is creation of an aerobic condition by a uh, specific trauma uh, with uh, low oxygenation and uh, by uh, inflammation, which cause with another bacteria like streptococci, staphylococci, and other and uh, creation of edema. Edema, uh, edema uh, create the uh, edema blocks local circulation and uh, oxygenation of tissue and uh, anaerobic condition. condition. Uh, in anaerobic condition, clostridium start to uh, to be activated. Clostridium start to produce a lot of toxic substance which destroy tissue, which um, destroy all tissue, uh, muscles, fetuses, skin, any tissue, they are sensitive for clostridium toxins. That's why gangrene occurs. And uh, in additional, um, in addition, substance which uh, which produce uh, in the process of uh, the cell death, they are also toxic for organism. And uh, bacteria toxin and uh, toxins of uh, necrotic tissue um, in blood and uh, intoxication also is very high in this situation. <coughs> and uh, also, also, clostridium perfinkins may cause several necrotizing entities followed by deep damage of small intestine. It ensures from the action of clostridial beta toxin, which potentiates cytotoxin and necrotizing activity. And clostridium perfumes are not so rare agent of food poisoning or food toxic infection. 
these disorders are related to its production of endotoxins by clostridia. Uh, endotoxin, which uh, causes uh, uh, disturbance of water, uh, salt water balance and uh, causes inflammation because uh, this toxin is a uh, super antigen. Okay, so on this slide you can see uh, this is normal, uh, normal microbiota and uh, uh, red is Clostridium perpringens, and this is intestine. I see intestine, and when uh, Clostridium they uh, multiply a lot, they can cause the um, destruction of the cell, or epithelial cell, and goes to the blood to the vessel. Um, and cause tissue necrosis. It's a, a case of enterotoxic uh, infection uh, and necrotizing entities. <coughs> Immunity. Antitoxics antibody neutralize the activity of multiplying microbial toxins. The immune response is non protective vehicle of low weight. Laboratory diagnosis of gas gang. The specimen, the pieces of necrotic tissue, tissue fluids and valves, discharge, surgical stitch materials, uh, dressings, etc. This preliminary, preliminary test, uh, microscopical examination of found discharge for immune fluorescence microscopy can be applied for direct identification of clostridia in clinical samples. And uh, cultural isolation is uh, one of the main tests uh, to get pure culture and uh, identificate it and uh, identificate its uh, uh, toxin, type of toxin. Uh, cultural isolation is elaborated in anaerobic condition, anaerobic jars, uh, special devices. Identification of microbial species takes into account uh, their growth on iron sulfide agar, fermentation of uh, carbohydrates, gelatin, liquefaction, and other biochemical tests, microbial, microbial serological properties. To confirm the diagnosis, experimental injection of mice with broth, culture, filtrates for exotoxin detection, as well as antitoxin toxin neutralizing neutralization reaction and performed. Rapid diagnostic tests for detection of clostridial antitoxin in clinical samples are based on ELISA test. Genetic typing of clostridia species is performed by PCR. So microscopic examination is immunofluorescence microscopy. Culture, uh, cultural isola culture isolation and uh, ELISA to find uh, clostridial exotoxins and PCR test to, to find to uh, genetic typing of clostridia species. Okay, here we can see um, here you can see uh, culture uh, how to cultivate um, so blood agar with hemolysis and uh, <coughs> and uh, test with um, milk uh, stormy clot reaction and uh, microscopy light microscopy and here we can see the uh, photo of the tissue of the patients with sky ganglia. Okay, this is cooked meat media for clostridium perfringens. It shows anaerobic bacteria growth after inoculation with samples. Tubes uh, showing cooked meat medium before inoculation. And uh, uh, egg yolks, egg yolk also can be applied. It uh, like staphylococci, it causes 
uh, it um, uh, it shows uh, latent latentness activity. <clears throat> treatment. Uh, treatment the intensive surgical management of wounds and injuries with remo removal of affected tissue up to the limb, limb uh, amputation, massive antibiotic chemotherapy against anaerobic infection with beta-lactams, aminoglycosides and metronidazole, infusion and detox uh, det detoxification therapy, administration of polyvalent pureed and uh, uh, concentrated antitoxin against the superfringens uh, and other clostridia. <clears throat> so, um, surgical management, antibiotics, and uh, very necessary to administrate uh, antitoxic antibody, antitoxic serum. Without antitoxic uh, serum therapy uh, treatment will not be successful. It is necessary, uh, nece necessary step of treatment. Surgical management of found uh, chemotherapy antibiotics and antitoxic serum with antitoxic antibody. Antibody against um, uh, clostridium exotoxins which will neutralize clostridium exotoxin in the blood. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, blood transfusion, and administration of inhibitors of fertility enzymes are the additional supportive measure for gas ganglion treatment. Prophylaxis of gas ganglion is non-specific. It primarily includes the protection of found and injured from contamination of their adequate surgical treatment. So adequate surgical treatment, it's a... Uh, main uh, non-specific prophylaxis against gas ganglion. <clears throat> Next, clostridium tetany, causative agent of tetanus. <clears throat> clostridium tetany is belong to family clostridiaceae, genus clostridium, species clostridium tetany. It is gram positive road, uh, about five micrometers in the lens, motile uh, peritrichos, round terminal spore, spore containing cell resembled drumsticks. They are uh, looks like drumsticks, drumsticks, because spore is uh, on the end of the road, and uh, spore is bigger than the cell. That's why uh, bacterial cell with the spore is looks like drumsticks. Cultivation, the optimal temperature is uh, between 15, 45 degrees. And uh, to cultivate uh, agar with blood and sugar can be applied. And of course, anaerobic condition in anaerobic jars they uh, produce, uh, clostridium tetany produce small, smooth colonies surrounded by a slight zones of hemolysis. Uh, the view of colonies resembles dewdrops. Cultivation in Kittadarosimedium results in homogeneous turbidity with gas production. Here you can see beta hemolytic colonies of clostridium tetany. On the blood agar. And the blood agar. Biochemical properties, they are also obligate anaerobe. They have poor biochemical activity uh, in spite uh, it was in the case of uh, Clostridium perfringens. It doesn't ferment carbohydrates, liquefied gelatin, coagulate milk, reduce nitrites to nitrates. Antigen structure, Clostridium tetany is divided into 10 serotypes according to variation of flagella H antigen. Somatic O antigen is group specific. Microbial exotoxin has common antigenic properties in all Clostridium tetany. Virulence factor, 
So there are two virulence factors, class three, uh, two exotoxins, tetanolysine and tetanospasmine. Class three uh, tetany produce two toxins and oxygen label hemolysine tet tetanolysine and heat la uh, label neurotoxin tetanospasmine. Tetanolysine is a membrane damaging fraction of the exotoxin with hemolytic and cardiotoxic properties. Also, it affects medial nuclei called the neurons of autonomic nervous system, but it is not so strong. Um, the main toxin is tetanospasmine. Tetanospasmine inactivates proteins that regulate release of inhibitory neurotransmitter glycine and gamma amino butyric acid. <coughs> I'm a battery uh, case. Uh, this leads unregulated ex, uh, excitatory synaptic activity in the motor neurons, uh, resulting in uh, spatic paralysis. Uh, the toxin being the irre irreversible, so re reco uh, recovery depends on where the new axonal terminals form. Um, Okay, uh, to understand mechanism of action of tetanus toxin, you should remember physiology. So you know that um, in our organism, uh, there is a system of uh, uh, in our organism, uh, there is a system of breaking. To, um, to not have a uh, hyperactivation of motor neurons, to not have um, uh, this, sy this system is necessary to not get motor neuron over excitation, breaking system. Um, uh, and this system is uh, consists of some neurotransmitters, which called uh, uh, which called um, glycine and gamma amino battery battery acid. Uh, to these neurotransmitters, they prevent uh, over excitation of modern neuron to not get. Uh, over excitation, to not get uh, uh, spastic paralysis, to not get um, you know uh, uh, unregulated excitatory synaptic activity, and um, the the uh, analysine, it goes to the uh, Neuro tissue it goes to the uh, neuro cell and enters to the synapses and uh, destroy the and destroy the proteins which needs uh, which which help uh, this uh, uh, neurotransmitters to enter. So there is a protein which called synaptobrevin. Uh, this protein is um, uh, is a helper for uh, glycine and gamma amino battery acid uh, to enter uh, to not to enter but uh, um sorry uh, so there is protein. Its name is Synapta Brevin. And this Synapta Brevin is a helper of neurotransmitters, uh, glycerin and uh, gamma amino battery case. This protein uh, helps uh, neurotransmitters to go out, to go out from the synapses and make it action, make its action like a breaking system to prevent uh, over excitation of the uh, modern uh, modern neurons 
but uh, clostridium tetany produce tetanospasmin, which destroy uh, which destroy uh, this protein. And uh, and uh, breaking system is not work because its neurotransmitters can't uh, go on from the synapses. They stay in the synapses and they can go on. Uh, and, uh, and inhibitory transmitters really is blocked. That's why continuous stimulation by excitatory transmitter. And uh, uh, that's why motor neurons, they have a, a lot of um, uh, uh, excitation and uh, uh, they uh, send impulses to the uh, to the muscles to to activate and this hyper activation of the muscles is uh, uh, spastic paralyze paralyzes I hope you understand. Resistance, uh, it is um, the same it, as it was in the case of uh, gas gangrene. Uh, spore make uh, clostridium uh, be very resistant. Uh, heating of the 16, 17 degrees and activates vegetative form of clostridium within 30 minutes. They are sensitive for conventation disinfectants. But spores are extremely resistant and keep viability in soil and dust for many years. They can withstand boiling for more than one hour. Standard disinfectants such as uh, 5% phenol or 1% formaldehyde inactivate clostridia spores only after 5-10 hours of exposure. So they the spores are extremely resistant. It is very big problem to kill the spore, to destroy the spore. Pathogenesis, uh, Clostridium tetany is a normal inhabitant of human and animal gut. Animals and humans are the major source of infection. Spores of Clostridia appear in the soil with fences and may stay there for years because spores are very resistant in environment. Microorganisms enter the body through the injured skin or mucous membranes via soil contaminated bounds or skin lesion, contact route of the disease transmission. More often, the disease affects children and agricultural workers because children are very active and they get uh, injured more often than uh, adults. Clostridium tetany multiplies in the site of primary contact and release exotoxin. Toxin undergoes retroaxonal or perineural lymphatic transport and moves into the spinal cord. So, so it is very quickly process uh, when clostridium tetany uh, very quickly process when toxin goes to the neural system. But bacteria stay in the uh, skin in the site of uh, in, uh, injury. But bacteria not spread, only it's toxin, tetanospasmin. And tetanospasmin spasmin bins to ganglionic receptors of neurons, penetrates into the synapses and block the releasing of inhibitory neurotransmitter, glycine and gamma amino butyric acid. Impairment of inhibitory signaling leads to the uncontrolled stimulation of neuromuscles, synapses of motor neurons that el uh, elicit tonic or myoclonic streeted muscles contraction. So, so here you can see injury. Uh, injury uh, which uh, uh, which uh, contaminated with the uh, spore of uh, uh, clostridium uh, and uh, contact roads of disease transmission. And bacteria multiply in the 
road, they multiplied in the injury and started to produce uh, tetanospasmin tetanolysin. And tetanospasmin, it goes to the blood and then very quickly goes to the neural system by axonal transport. It goes to the spinal cord where it um, destroy uh, the process of uh, neurotransmitter releasing, uh, actually releasing of glycin and uh, gamma amino butyric acid. And uh, that's why hyper excitation of hyper stimulation of motor neurons of yours. And each and this hyper stimulation of motor neurons uh, uh, manifestate as a, uh, muscles, uh, as a strong muscles contraction. And it begins with the contract spasm of the face. Uh, jaw, facial, neck muscles, trismus, um, rhesus sardonicus, and dysphagia, no one only symptoms after viral incubation period. And uh, uh, then uh, this uh, spasm go lower and lower, and it can, uh, the spasm of uh, uh, of uh, muscles of the breathing system and uh, lung system and uh, cardiac system can occur and uh, can cause a lethal outcome. And also complete tetanic spasm in advanced disease patients rigid in moderate opistotonus with the arms extended abdominal board like respiratory arrest may occur. Uh, the disease prognosis is very serious. In case of delay of treatment, the developed treatment results in lethal outcome in 40, 50 of cases. Antitoxical, antitoxic natural immunity is very weak and can prevent next tetanus infection. This is because of very quickly uh, entering of uh, toxin to the neural system. So, uh, toxin uh, is not stay long time in uh, in the road of infection. Toxin not stay long time in blood. It it's very quickly goes to the uh, neural system. But to uh, to to get immunity, it is necessary to make an antigen presentation. You know. And antigen presentation means that, that antigen, in this uh, case, toxin, must be uh, eating from um, uh, macrophage from antigen presenting cell. But the process of uh, go on of, uh, of the toxin is very quickly. And that's why macrophage and antigen presenting cell that they can't uh, engage uh, toxin. And they can't make an antigen presentation because they don't have enough antigen. That's why immunity is not, uh, is very weak and can prevent tetanus infection. Laboratory diagnosis of tetanal specimens of found discharge biopsy tissue samples or stitch material. Investigation of toxin in clinical sample is performed by ELISA test or by uh, indirect hemagglutination test with erythrocyte uh, antitetanus diagnosticum or by neutralization reaction in mice. For cultural isolation, the specimen should be previously heated in 80 degree for 20 minutes to inactivate non sporoforming bacteria, and they are inoculated into the medium or upper blood thicker that is placed into anaerobic jar. After several days of incubation, the gross colonies undergo microscopy. Toxin accumulation is evaluated by experiment mice infection. 
the diagnosis is confirmed by neutralization reaction with aten uh, anti tetanus antibodies. So you can use ELISA to catch uh, tetanus plasmin tetanus toxin, and you can go get uh, and you can make cultural isolation with getting pure culture identification and the serial identification of uh, tetanus plasmin. Culture results are positive in only approximately 30% of patients with tetanus because disease can be caused by relatively few organisms and the slow growing bacteria are killed rapidly when exposed to air. Treatment. Urgent, urgent prophylaxis of the disease depends on the level of initial antitoxic immunity of affected person. Prophylaxis covers all patients with traumas, bones, animal bites, etc. Previously vaccinated individuals are immunized with tetanus toxoid. Non immune patients obtain tetanus toxoid and human antitoxin anti tetanus immune globulin. For treatment, of developed uh, tetanus, the high dose of human antitoxic tetanus immunoglobulin or horse antitoxic serum are used. In addition, anti convulsed drug therapy is admitted, administered. And uh, um, the outcome of uh, the disease is depends of, of uh, beginning of uh, antitoxic treatment because, uh, <coughs> as I said previously, toxin is very quickly go uh, goes to the neural system, and uh, antitoxin anti antitoxin treatment antitoxic antibody it uh, they they can't goes to the neuro neural system so it can catch. Uh, and neutralize antibody only if uh, it is on the blood or on the tissue. But toxin which is in neural in neuro tissue uh, is uh, it, it it can be neutralized by antibodies. And if um, if uh, a lot of toxins goes to the neural system. Uh, it will be very hard disease and it will not be easy to treat and uh, little outcome can occur. Uh, <sighs> Active prophylaxis helps uh, to prevent uh, tetanus. It is easy, easily to prevent, more easily to prevent uh, tetanus than treat tetanus. Um, active prophylaxis is occurred with uh, vaccination with tetanus toxoid. Tetanus toxoid is an essential constituent of complex ADP, ADPT polyvaccine, adsorbate diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine with uh, aluminum hydroxide and adjuvant as adjuvant or of combined toxoid preparation ADT. Uh, ADPT and ADT, uh, uh, they are Russian vaccine. Maybe in your country you have another vaccine. But the active substance is the same. Active substance is toxoid. Tetanus is completely preventable disease. The vaccination start in repeat tries in the first years of life. Subsequent boosters is injected in uh, 9, 20 months and then reproduced every 10 years. So how to, to get uh, toxoid? Um, toxoid is prepared from toxin, from tetanus. In this case, from tetanus plasmin. Uh, toxin is, uh, you can see the toxin, it has uh, toxin, uh, to toxic uh, property and antigenic property. On this uh, picture, this is 
toxin and this is uh, antigenic determinant. And then uh, toxin must be uh, react must uh, and then toxin uh, <coughs> so you have toxin and then uh, it must be um, processing with uh, uh, formalin and uh, about 40 40 percent formalin and uh, uh, in 40 degrees during four weeks, about one month. And then this toxin lose its toxicity, but save it, but keep its antigenic uh, property, its antigenic structure. And now it is toxoid. Safety, non-toxin, but uh, antigenic preparation. And the last one is Clostridium botulinum, causative agent of botulism. Causative agent of botulism, uh, botulis means sausage. Uh, botulism poisoned by sausage toxin. Uh, was firstly discovered and studied by uh, even uh, Armenjime. Uh, he isolated microbial pathogen both from the intestine and spleen of patients who died from intoxication and uh, at the same time for the food they had in get harm remands. remands. Okay. Uh, uh, family Clostridium, Clostridia, uh, genus Clostridium, species Botulinum. Oh, Botulinum. Morphology. Uh, Clostridium botulinum are large grain positive rows, motile peritrichus, and with oval terminal or, or subterminal spore. Sub uh, spore forming cell looks like tennis racket or drumsticks. Cultivation. The optimal temperature is uh, 30 or 40 degrees anaerobic condition, of course, and uh, middle pH. Culturing of sugar blood agar in anaerobic jar reveals filamentose are regular hemolytic colonies. A growing anaerobic culture has the smell of rancid butter. Uh, cultivation in kitarose medium results in homogeneous turbidity followed by microbial precipitation. Your chemical properties, it's also obligate anaerobes, ferment carbohydrates, uh, glucose, mal maltose, glycerol, and some other with acid and gas and products. Mixed type of fermentation result in acetic, buttery, and lactic acid. Express market proteolytic activities, they produce hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, and uh, volatile amines, able to reduce nitrites to nitrites. Uh, liquid gelatin and coagulate milk. All but all clostridium can coagulate milk. Antigenic structure. Clostridium botulin is divided into eight serovirus A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, according to the antigenic variants of microbial X toxin. A, B, E, and E variants are found to be extremely toxic for humans, uh, especially A. It causes very hard. Uh, uh, it causes very hard uh, disease, and uh, serotype A. Uh, it can. It leads very often to lethal outcome. More easily, disease is caused by serotype E. Also, bacteria possess flagellar H antigen and somatic O antigen. Violence factors, the most po poisonous neurotoxin node uh, today. Uh, one human lethal dose of dry botulinum toxin is about uh, 0 0.1 nanograms for one kilogram or body weight. And anaerobic condition clostridia start to secrete exotoxin, especially after propagation in various foodstuffs 
meat, fish, canned mushroom, and vegetables, or products with anaerobic condition. Clostridium botulinum, uh, botulinum exotoxin is composed of A and B subunits. Subunit A is responsible for toxic activity, and uh, subunit B portion absorbs the molecule form acid inactivation in stomach. So B, it's like transport, and A is like uh, active subunit. It is also resistant to digestive enzymes of gastrointestinal tract. Once, in, once uh, ingested, the toxin is absorbed in gut. It reaches the neural system and inhibits the release of acetylcholine and uh, cholera, uh, cholinergic synapses, resulting in muscular paralysis. <laughs> okay, the mechanism of action is very similar for uh, to to the tetanus um, bot toxin is also goes to the neural system and um, destroy and enter to the synapses and destroy the protein, which is. Uh, which helps uh, mediators, neurotransmitters to release. So, okay, look at this picture. You see a protein which is named synaptobrevin. You can see that uh, this protein is necessary for uh, releasing of acetylcholine. And uh, botulotoxin, it, uh, it um, destroy this uh, this uh, protein, um, and that's why uh, that's why uh, acetylcholine stay in the vesicles and can't be released and can't be released. But acetylcholine is a neurotransmitters. Uh, by acetylcholine, neural cell send the signal to the muscle to move. Without acetylcholine, uh, muscle will not move. That's why paralysis, paralysis occurs. Resistance, heating at uh, 90 degrees for 40 minutes or boiling for about uh, 10 minutes, uh, irreversibly inactivate botulinum, to botulinum toxin. Uh, boiling about 10 minutes, prevent uh, botulinum infection bo or botulinum intoxication. Heating at uh, 80 degrees kill vegetative forms of clostridia within 30 minutes. The spores have strong resistance and remain viable in soil and dust for years. Uh, they can by sand boiling for up to six hours. So Spores can bind stain bowling for up to six hours. It is very important. And even keeps their viability in large pieces of meat after autoclaving for 50 minutes and at uh, 120 degrees. Standard disinfectation such as phenol activates spores or botulins from procedure after, after exposure for about one uh, day. Pathogenesis. Spores of Clostridium botulinum can be found in the intestine of animals, birds, and fish. They permanently discharge spores into surrounding environment with places. The spores retain viability in the soil for a long time and can appear on the surface of vegetables and fruits with the soil dust. Infected animals and fishes are regarded as a major source of infection. Botulism is transmitted predominantly by fecal oral road. After ingestion of contaminated meat products, can it, uh, mushrooms, poultry, sausage, vegetables, smoked and canned fish, and many other products which, uh, in which anaerobic condition presence. Uh, 
This foodstuff may contain germinated spores and various amounts of acetoxin produced by viable microbial cells. Also, botulinum toxin, botulinum toxin may enter to the body through the valve surface. It is not very common, but it can occur. Incubation period of the disease varies from several hours to 10 days, and even more than depends mostly on the amount of absorbed, absorbed exotoxin. After ingestion and intestinal absorption of exotoxin, it appears in blood and invades central neural system, muscle, and other tissue. Toxin affects the neural nuclei of spinal cord and brain, neuromuscular junction, cardiovascular system. Toxin binding is irreversible. Uh, binding is ir irreversible. Acetylcholinergic uh, acetyl action of toxin causes deep CNS disorders that result in dysphagia, vomiting, dry mouth, swallowing troubles, aponia, disease, headache, diplopia, and eventual muscular weakness and paralysis. Diaphragm paralysis can cause a little outcome. Mortality rate is very high, about 24-3%. And uh, diaphragm paralysis is, uh, goes very, very quickly. So in this case, you can see how to catch, uh, how you can catch botulism. Uh, by uh, 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 the main uh, way of transmission is foodborne botulism. <coughs> and also it can be wound botulism, <coughs> inhalation botulism, and iatrogenic botulism we will talk about. And also children's uh, infant, they can go, they can <coughs> catch botulism by ingestion of the spores. Uh, usually it is uh, uh, honey. Okay, and bottle toxin goes to the uh, human blood system and then to the neural system when it destroys releasing of the acetylcholine and uh, destroy uh, <clears throat> uh, the neural muscle transmission and cause the uh, muscles unmoving paralysis. And what about iatrogenic, iatrogenic botulism? You know the preparation products. Uh, injection of the botulinum, botulinum toxin are widely used in different medical fields, namely neurology, urology, uh, stomatology, cosmetology, gastroenterology, etc. Preparation of botulinum toxin Type A prevent the release of acetylcholine and the ending of motor neurons, leading to the long-term muscle relaxation. So uh, the purpose of this therapy is to get muscle relaxation, uh, especially in neurology. It has been acknowledged that treatment with BTA has very good safety profile and uh, tolerability. Extremely rare but thorough complication of botulinum therapy is condition which is associated with generalized muscle weakness, swallowing difficulty, disparity arrest, and may lead to the lethal outcome even, but in solitary cases. Clinical symptoms, headache, dizziness, insomnia, fatigue, blurred vision, opening difficulty, slurred speech, dysphagia, but can constipation and anxiety occurred uh, 0 um, 36 days after um, botulinum toxin injection, especially from 2 and 6 days after operation. Such disorders which present like botulism are known as a botulism-like syndrome and iatrogenic botulism. Uh, the cause of uh, BTA as adverse effect uh, is a most likely hematological split of the toxin. 
uh, violation of botulinum therapy technique may, may lead to disease. So uh, the main factor of risk is violation of botulinum therapy technique. So make something wrong, uh, especially overdose to get uh, more than uh, it was necessary or um, to have uh, injection more often than it must be or to make infection in wrong, uh, wrong place in, and to inject uh, in the case when <clears throat> uh, botox is injected to the vessels and all uh, and some individual individual uh, features of the patient can lead to the botulism after botox you should know about <clears throat> okay natural antitoxic community is almost not created being of the over of the lower um, okay. <laughs> As continue, natural antitoxic immunity is almost not created, being of the very low rate. It is the same that it was in the case of tetanus because um, toxin and Antigen very quickly goes to the neural system and immune immune competent cell they can catch it they can engage it and they can make an antigen presentation that's why immunity is not a cure immunity is weak <sighs> laboratory diagnosis the sample of food uh, remnants warming blood and patients too. Uh, stomach contents and various corpse tissue, small and large intestine, brain, spinal cord are used for post-mortem examination. The presence of uh, botulinum toxin in the specimen is confirmed by neutralization reaction in mice or guinea pigs and by ELISA or by indirect chemoglutination test with erythrocyte antitoxin diagnostic. So the main uh, the main uh, method of diagnosis is ELISA. The main purpose is to find the botulotoxin in the species because uh, uh, very often uh, bacteria is not uh, on the organism. It, bacteria can be, can be absent in the organism. It can absent in the food. Only it's toxin. And that's why the purpose of uh, uh, examination must be to find toxin. Toxin is an antigen. That's why we can find it by antibodies. So by ELISA, by indirect hemoglutination test, and uh, uh, by uh, reaction of neutralization in mice. Uh, cultivation isolation also can be uh, applied, but you should uh, remember that it can be false negative. For cult culture isolation, the samples should be previously heated at 80 degrees for 20 minutes to inactivate non performing bacteria. They are next inoculated in, into um, uh, keep the rosy bros or other equivalent media and incubated in anaerobic condition. The isolated culture is further tested for biochemical and toxigenic properties. Cultural toxin secretion is revealed by experimentation mice infection. Toxin serotype identification is performed by neutralization reaction with antitoxin type specific antibodies. Toxicity of culture can be also confirmed by molecular genetic test. Treatment. Uh, urgent passive, uh, passive immune therapy includes a repeat injection of high dose of host derived polyvalent botulinum antitoxic serum against A, B, C, and E servers. Antibody against botulotoxin. It's a basis of treatment.
treatment. The persons suspected to use foodstuff with botulinum toxin are treated with polyvalent antitoxic serum in lower doses to prevent severe intoxication. Non-specific prophylaxis include the prevention of food contamination and the maintenance of established industrial sanitary condition of meat, fish, caviar, and vegetable canning in their proper storage. That's all. Mm-hmm.